I played and reviewed Final Fantasy VII Remake back in 2020 on the PS4 Pro, and when I did, I scored it a 9.5 out of 10. The one and only flaw is that some of the background details look very pixelated, such as doors, kind of like the developers just didn't really give as much of a shit about small things in the game. But nevertheless, it got a 9.5 out of 10, and I really loved my time playing through it. Now, fast forward, it got remastered on the PS5, and I got to play it and review it again on the PS5, although this time it's called Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission, which is essentially the exact same remake with the inclusion of DLC availability. Now, I got mine through PlayStation Plus Premium, and I got it for free. So I personally had to pay for the DLC, it was $14.99, which isn't terrible. The problem is that when you promote a remaster of a remake in the likes of this way, and no matter how you get it, you should still be eligible to play the DLC that it supposedly comes with it, no matter what. Even if it did the EA bullshit from the 2010s where they gave you game passes for online activity or DLC or whatever, if you get it even through Gamefly or on PSN, whatever, you should still always have the accessibility because it's still technically a bot game. Now, I understand if you get it from Gamefly and them withholding it personally, that's understandable. But I still don't agree with it. If you're the first person to get the disc, I think you should be the first person to get the code. That's just how I look at it. Now, like I said, in this instance, I played through the remastered remake on PS5 through PlayStation Plus Premium's uh, version. And like I said, it is 7 Remake on PS5. And it is literally the exact same game with the inclusion of New Story DLC. And the main game, what I can say is that it plays perfectly. It is smooth as fuck. The frame rates just kill. The visuals are breathtaking, although admittedly on PS5, they're a little underwhelming nowadays because now the first game I played on my PS5 was God of War Ragnarok, which blew my mind as far as visual quality. I finally have a game system that actually utilizes my Vizio 4K's HDR and just visual treatment completely. So I use God of War Ragnarok as an example because that was a 20 out of 10 for visuals. Now Final Fantasy VII Remake Remastered, it still looks breathtakingly good, but the problem is on PS5, it just doesn't look completely on par with the PS5 originals. That's not a bad thing though, it's a remaster of a remake of a 90s game. That's understandable completely. So I don't really degrade, downgrade, or even negatively impact this review based off of saying that, per se. Especially considering the frame rate and the gameplay is super fucking smooth to play through. The combat and the gameplay, breathtakingly amazing. The story is just a cinematic masterpiece. I love Final Fantasy VII's story. I love that it is just a fleshed out, fully built and realized world that's basically collapsing because people are tired of big bosses that have taken control and taken over the entire world and basically the story is an uprise of the big corporations and people just getting sick and tired of a one rule lifestyle. And in comes Cloud Strife alongside Tifa, Aerith, Barrett, Biggs, Johnny I guess, he's more of a, a side character, like a really, really side character, Wedge, and then you have talking dogs and you know the, the big bads, the bad guys that also have equal amount of dialogue, which that's one thing I do love about Final Fantasy VII's story, is that they flesh out the world, the characters, the bad characters, the good characters, they flesh out everything entirely. Now, the problem I have with this game is that 
the camera system in the gameplay and the combat specifically, it's kind of dog shit. In the sense of when you're facing off against multiple parties of opponents, more than one opponent, and you lock on, you can't change the camera. The camera basically auto reacts to the fight. And in doing so, the camera really gets really wonky. And there are a lot of times where you just cannot even see what you're doing. So there comes a point where you just have to button mash until you can see again. And on the easier difficulties, that's no problem. But I can't imagine that would be okay on the harder difficulties. Now another thing, as far as the gameplay and the combat, I really, really did not like how all of your secondary main characters throughout the fights, throughout your running around time, the dialogue from your allies gets super repetitious. Like, I mean, you're running through a five minute segment and sometimes your partners say the exact goddamn line every minute or so. Like, come on Cloud, it's right over there. Or, you need to block more, or something like that. And they say that repeatedly, repeatedly, re repeatedly in a row. I can understand through the game, once, you know, in every combat segment or once running around, but I went through the full on just story and there was so much dialogue repetition in the gameplay. Now, I honestly don't have too many bad things to say about this game because I think this game is still a really great game and everybody should play it. I think it's a, a remarkable achievement nevertheless in the sense of remade games, especially from 90s to 2020 kind of remakes. But it still had its quirks and honestly it's not a 9.5 anymore. Now the DLC with Yuffie is basically, from what I've read up because I don't really know too much, if anything, about the original Final Fantasy VII, never played it, just know about the very end of it and who lives and who dies, otherwise never played it, never paid any attention to the original. I do know that Yuffie is set to be in the second part of this remake and in doing so they made a DLC that's kind of a prequel for her story which is set between chapters 5 to 10 in the original main story and the DLC story is pretty good I enjoyed the characters honestly I actually enjoyed the characters more in the DLC than the main game just because Yuffie especially is like a 15 16 year old energetic spastic little girl who thinks she's a 27 year old that's gonna own the world with combat and I really liked that kind of excitement out of her character and then you got the other characters which were standouts as well but not nearly as standout-ish as Yuffie. Overall for me Final Fantasy 7 Remake Intergrade or Intermission whatever you want to call this remaster of the remake it's really good not bad at all there are a couple gripes I have, more so in the gameplay aspect of it. And for me, this is a 9 out of 10 on PS5. Thank you. If you like this video, please feel free to join my membership plan on here. It will greatly help me in the future. Thank you.